This is a new project that I took on recently. It's a, kind of a fun thing. There you see me chopping a chisel into the center of an 11 inch length of half inch square bar. Now I'm starting to work down the end. You can see the slot already right there, just beyond where it's glowing orange. Notice that I'm leaving the very end of it with a nice knob that'll become useful later on. I'm working to put a taper behind that knob and we're trying to maintain the nice square section because I think that that'll be aesthetically pleasing. This is going to be the guard for a sword. A friend of mine received a sword as an award in the SCA and he wanted to replace the hilt, the guard handle and pommel, with something that just seemed a little more appropriate to him. And so I said I would take on the job. You see me comparing it to the length on the anvil. I make marks on my anvil often to just indicate where I am, and I want to make sure both ends end up being symmetrical to one another. Back into the fire, back out of the fire, we continue tapering. It was several heats, and I've spared you a lot of, uh, of video I'm drawing it down. I'm looking to just draw it down nicely, get it from 11 inches, eventually it'll be about 16 inches overall. Gratuitous view of the inside of the forge there. Just so you have an idea of what my little forge looks like inside. And continue drawing it down and trying to make that taper fairly nice and smooth. <clears throat> yeah, the goal. Uh, now I'm working on the other end. I skipped a lot of it there. Uh, just get both sides. The goal here is going to be a Katzbalger which was a distinctively German sword during the late Middle Ages, I want to say 15th, early 16th century. And since my friend's SCA persona is German, uh, he felt that that would be more appropriate than the one-piece guard handle pommel all-in-one of cast brass. Here we see what I left the knob on for. I'm clamping it in a vise, and we've got that knob there. And I'm just going to take that hammer and I'm going to beat it down, just upsetting it to kind of spread it a little bit. Because I want to make that into kind of a finial at the end of the, uh, at the end of the length of the guard arm. So now you can see that I'm just kind of trying to taper it behind there. One of the things that I love about this anvil, it's a farrier's anvil, and it has all kinds of curved surfaces here and there that a standard blacksmith's anvil doesn't. And I like being able to find those surfaces for different sorts of shaping. I'm just drawing it down. Now there's a shot of what's going to become the pommel. That great big old bolt was once part of a, a railroad. And I tell you what, I found out later that those bolts are quite a bit tougher than you'd expect. And here we are, working over the shape of the... Uh, of the guard, because the Katzbunger guard, you can actually see a drawing on the end for roughed out about what I want to make it look like. And it doesn't end up exactly like that, but it has that kind of double S, or single S shape, but a, a double loop making a big S. And the hard part, of course, is getting them to match. And now I'm switching back over to working that bolt into a pommel. You just heard the ting of a little tool falling off of the stump. Because I'm really beaten on this sucker. That bolt is seriously tough to move. That metal is something else. I wish I had a lump of mild steel that size, but uh, it works well enough. Here we have the guard and the bolt that's going to be a pommel next to each other. And after cutting off the, the end of the bolt, Pommel in, you can see I'm drilling it, and then I'm using a tap, and I don't have a proper tap handle, I'm just using a, a vice grip, and I think that that's just going to have to be how it is. A little bit of oil from, uh, I just use sewing machine oil, but it works nicely. I'm twisting it, stamping my touch mark into the guard, and just have to hold it up to show you the touch mark. I don't know how well you can see that, but it is a little 
Now I have the, the metal hot, but not glowing. I waxed it. I like to do that with some of the blacksmithing stuff. Next we've got shaping a piece of maple for the handle, drilling it out. Maple is absolutely my favorite wood for just about any knife handle. It may not be the fanciest looking, but it really does a good job. Continuing to use a small file to try to fit it to the tang of the sword. You can see that's the sword across my lap. And the reason there's blue and white on it is I have the, um, the area on the sword masked off where there is etching. And the sword was given to my friend as an award. Shaking the outside of the pommel, hand sanding, or not pommel, a handle, hand sanding the handle. And then little leather washers that will go between the, um, the wood and the metal bits just as a little bit of cushioning so that there's something that I can really crank that guard or crank that um, pommel down on. And just trimming it in place. And you can see everything's starting to come together. Unfortunately, since I just had the camera on a tripod, uh, it doesn't quite show the pommel for most of this, but there I am really screwing it down. I threaded it as deep as I could get that tap to go. And I really crank that sucker on, and it holds. It's a good solid handle now. Feels good in the hand. It actually looks a whole lot better than the original. I should have actually asked him to leave me the that brass thing so that I could compare. But now I'm unwrapping just pulling all the tape and all the paper off. I'll spare you most of this. I'll just skip right to the end so that I can show you the sword with the inscription on it. And there we have it. We have a finished sword hilt.